Welcome to Copenhagen. Thanks for dropping in. Uh, today I want to talk about cover sheets or release paper. Um, if you're new to diamond painting, you may have seen some whip pictures, uh, which means work in progress. Uh, that's diamond paintings that people are working on. And you may have noticed that some of them have um, small rectangles of paper on them. Uh, and you're wondering what they are and why people do that. So I thought I would explain how I use them and also explain why not all release paper is the same. Okay, so when you get your diamond painting and open it up and lay the canvas out, you will find that there is a sort of waxy feeling, a shiny paper on top of the glue. Uh, this is to stop anything sticking to it and it's designed so that it will peel off the glue uh, and not stick to it. So this happens to be Homecraftology. Um, probably the most common one is this. You'll see this a lot on diamond paintings. Um, it's exactly the same stuff. Uh, just doesn't have a brand. Well, it does have a brand name, but it's not a diamond painting company name. So most diamond paintings are covered in this. It'll look like that. But for this uh, one, I just happen to be using this home craftology. So it comes covered. Um, sometimes this one is in two strips. And uh, sometimes it might even be three, four, five, like thin strips. Sometimes it's just one big piece. So when you're working on the diamond painting, you don't want a lot of glue exposed because um, dust and pet hairs and crumbs and basically anything that's floating about in the air will stick to it. Um, and your hands will stick to it as well. So when I started diamond painting, I was just using the, the normal uh, stuff that came with it. And the way that, that I do them and the way that I start them is because I'm right handed, I start in the bottom right hand corner. Um, when I did my very first one, I started up in the top left hand corner and was working from left to right as if I was reading a book. That sort of idea, start up here, go along, go along. But I very quickly found out doing that, um, when I had uh, cut open the section, um, the palm of my hand would sit on the glue when I was trying to place the dots and it got really annoying uh, really quickly and then I thought about it and I thought hang on a minute if I start here my hand is off the glue and then I can sit the edge of my hand on the, on the table and I can place the drills here and then once I fill up that section and I go to the next section I can sit my hand on top of the drills and then I'm not sticking to the glue so Ever since then, that's always how I do it. Um, people have different ways. Some people start up on the left, some people start on the right, at the top, at the bottom. It's all different. Um, some people said they start in the middle. It's really up to you, but the just the reason that I do it the way that I do it is because it stops my hand sticking to the glue. So initially what I was doing was I would get the diamond painting and I would uh, set it up. Um, I would normally put masking tape around the edges um, because the glue overlaps the actual picture. You can see it there. So this is sticky. So what a lot of people do is they put uh, tape, um, masking tape or um, stuff they call washi tape. But the point of it is to just cover up this glue and it stops your hand sticking to it and it stops dust and stuff sticking to it making it look kind of grubby um, so ideally I would have went round this and uh, covered that the very first time I did it I put the tape right on the edge of the line and when I finished the diamond painting and went to take the masking tape off it was popping up some of the drills so after that happened I don't quite go to the line, maybe a millimetre or two away, 
so it's, it's a tiny gap um, and it's not as annoying as that you can imagine if your hand is sticking on it all the time really annoying so um, masking tape around the edges would be the first thing but once that's done um, what I was doing was I would take up uh, some of the cover I would decide this one's a bit easier because it's uh, it's split in two so I would decide what sort of area I would do so roughly probably I would say something like that so what I would do then is I would fold the paper back and then I would work on this area and I, I would I would do this until it was filled in and probably cut the lines a little bit straighter but um, do that until it's filled in once that's finished I can set my hand on it because it's covered in drills and then I would just cut along again um, if you're trying to cut along you need to actually peel the paper up but you can tear it as well if you don't mind the paper getting torn so I would take that along and to roughly the same length again crease it so now I would have a square here that was done sim hand on that while I'm working on this one and then fill this one and then just work my way along and then um, maybe the second part I wouldn't bother making it small I'd maybe just do it that size maybe do it a bit, uh, a bit narrower so it would be like that and then fill up that section and then go along to however far I want to go and do that section and then basically just work my way up the diamond painting so that's the way that I was doing it for quite a long time and I did see these sheets of paper people were posting pictures of diamond paintings in progress or whips as we call them um, and I thought what are those squares why are they doing that so I started uh, asking about it and I found out uh, why people use it so I'm going to show you so what I'll do is I'll take this off completely and this is what I do now um, when I get my diamond paintings when I'm ready to start working on them I take the original cover off completely and I use um, release paper or covered uh, paper people have got different names for it now, what I did was, um, I thought, okay, I want some of this stuff. I, I went on AliExpress, just looked for it, uh, ordered some, got it, and um, it turned up. But when it turned up, I realised that one side is not shiny, and the other side is. So I thought, okay, that might make a difference and I wasn't sure which way I was meant to put it because it was new so what I did was I put the release paper at the very edge on that extra glue and I just put it on and then I tried to peel it off see what would happen because I thought if it rips it's not going to affect the diamond painting and it, it comes off fine that's the shiny side so then I tried it with the dull side And I could feel it's not coming off as easily. And that's only a thin strip. And I thought, right, okay, it's shiny side down. Then I thought, this is just asking to go wrong. So what I did was I put a check mark on the dull side of the paper. So I would know that um, the shiny side was always down. So I just sat with all the sheets and put a check mark on all of them. So then once that was done, I thought about how I was going to do it. And I thought, okay, I should put these sheets in the opposite order from the way that I'm going to do them. So if we imagine that that is the diamond painting rather than doing the whole thing, I'll do this section. So this is the diamond painting. And I'm going to start in this bottom corner. So the first place I would put the sheet is up here. Now I would put 
the edge, I'm, I'm just doing this as an example because it fits in the screen, but um, this, this would be at the very edge of the diamond painting, like the white border like this over this side. And this would overlap onto uh, the non-sticky part. So that if I go to pick it up, it's working here because I'm actually laying it on top of this, that's how I can get a grip. But if I had put it just on the glue, um, it's really hard to try and get a hold of the edge of the paper. So you take it off the glue so you can pull the paper up. So if you imagine that that's the diamond painting. So I, I do that one first and then I do this one next. And these are quite big sheets and I picked a, a small area. But this is the idea. Um, have an overlap so it's easy to pick up. I mean, normally it wouldn't be as big as that. It's just, uh, I can see this is going to be two and a half. Um, I'll move this further across then. Just to make it look a bit more like it. So, if I have that one there. Then an overlap. And then an overlap again. But when you're doing it, um, I'm doing this kind of quick. It's better if you actually line them up. So you would be trying to get the bottom in line with the one beside it. And you use the grid to, to see if it's straight. I'm not going to look too close. Um, and then you end up with them. That's a sort of idea. So I would do those th well, three if it was this small. Then again, I would start at this side. Try and keep them sort of lined up. So then the whole thing would be covered. And again, start in this corner. So that means I pull this one off. And then this is my work area. So you can see how it's a lot neater. And you can sort of predetermine what size you want the screws to be. Um, and then if you work on it, you don't quite get finished, you need to go and do something. You put the, the cover sheet back on top and just touch it down on the glue areas and that'll stick it in place. Now, the extra thing that I do, and people ask me a lot about it, is uh, you see the, this stuff here. A lot of people ask me what that is. And it is placemats for like dinner tables. This is uh, plastic, but it, feels like material so it's washable um, in case it gets kind of grubby you can wash them and I use them to go over the top when I'm not working on it and uh, it stops any of the, the paper curling up or anything like that or getting caught in anything so it gives a, a nice flat area plus there's a little bit of weight in these things so it helps to just hold everything down and for me the work table that I use is at an angle. Um, if I don't have these mats and I try and set things on top of these, the, the things all slide down to the bottom of the table. So these mats provide some friction and it means I can set things and they don't slide. But the main reason for me is just to keep everything flat and clean. Um, that way any kind of dust or hair is going to land on this and it's not going to land on here and maybe get through somewhere and stick. So it's just extra protection um, and that's that's why I use them. Very, very handy. You can shuffle them to, to fit whatever. If, I'm, if I was working on this, for example, nope. the other thing is I would tape it to the table so it doesn't do that. Um, if I was using this or doing this, I would put the mats like that, maybe don't put it right to the edge because it'll end up touching the glue and then that and then the rest would be covered. So then I've only got the area that I'm working on, then once that area is finished um, I, don't, I don't bother putting this back over the top of it because again the table's at an angle so the, the sheets will slide off. Um, so that would be done so it wouldn't be sticky. So I would have another sheet there, 
and uh, this one would be off. So I would have that, I would have another mat covering all of this and again I'd be working in that area. So somebody did comment a while ago and said it looks like an operating table um, because you see all these mats uh, covering it and then there's just the section I'm working on. That's the way that I like to work. So that is what they are used for. Um, it saves you having to cut and rip uh, the paper. They're reusable, so they'll last a while. But these ones are only shiny on one side. Now, I never realised that initially. I just thought they would be shiny on both sides. Um, found out they weren't. And that was the way that I got around it. But I did have one time that I put one down and when I tried to put, peel it up, it was sticking to the glue and it was shiny side down. So I sort of lost faith in, in these ones and decided to order ones that were double sided. So I contacted Sam at Painting with Diamonds and she said that she had, uh, she calls them replacement colours, um, they're sometimes called release paper. So she has them and they are a lot smaller and they're thicker and they're sticky on both sides so it doesn't matter which way you put them. Um, I found that I actually prefer these because you work on a smaller area. For me this is a more sensible size. Uh, to work on um, this is pretty big so um, these are the the ones that I use now and I'm really pleased with them so uh, I did buy them um, so I'm just going to mention uh, in case anybody is interested painting with diamonds dot co dot uk and that's Sam um, just in case anybody's interested in them um, after I had been using them, um, another guy who diamond paints, I know we're few and far between, um, a guy called Billy, uh, he has a YouTube channel, uh, Billy's Diamond Painting and More. Um, I started talking to him and he sent me a package with some bits and pieces and one of the bits and pieces was release paper. So this is the package that Billy sent me. I haven't even used it yet, but it's shiny on both sides. So it won't matter which way I put them. So, and again, it's small. Um, I think it looks about exactly the size. Not quite. It's actually slightly smaller than uh, the ones that Sam does. But it is thinner, uh, you can see through it. Um, but the really good thing is, again, it's double sided, so you don't have to think about it. Um, still to use these yet, um, I need to try them. It's just, I tend to just uh, have these other ones um, in the top of the drawer and I just pull them out as I use them. Um, then uh, I had an order with smithsbeads.co.uk and Mike uh, threw in uh, these. Now you can tell the cover paper is divided into front and back. Use the wax side against the diamond painting. Do not stick the matte side to the surface of the diamond painting otherwise the diamond painting will be damaged. So this one comes with a warning um, the one from Aliexpress came with that, so I don't know if that's a warning in Chinese of what it is, but um, I was lucky that I tested it, I think, um, because I was just kind of wary, I thought some, something weird here, it's not shiny on both sides. So again, I haven't even opened these, um, but I'm going to be doing a little test and that will probably be the next video. So I'm not going to open them just now. I want to compare these and talk about um, when things go wrong. And for example, paper sticks to this.
Um, it actually happened to my wife uh, in the summer. Uh, we were sitting working on our diamond paintings. We have identical tables facing each other. And she is sitting closest to the window. The window was open because it was a warm day and we were sitting diamond painting and talking. And she had, I need to watch because I don't want to do it myself. Um, she had the key, which is the sheet of paper that has all your uh, your numbers and stuff. This is the one that I'm working on at the moment, uh, Hans Christian Anderson. She had her key sitting and a gust of wind blew and the paper flipped up and landed on the glue and it really stuck. So that was panic stations. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about that. What happens if you get paper or tissue paper or whatever um, stuck on the glue? How do you get it off? That is going to be the next video. This really was just to explain what release paper is and how people use it or how I use it. As I said, people have their own techniques, their own uh, patterns or the way that the ways that they work. Um, but this is the way that I do it. I start in the bottom right hand corner and I work along and then come back and work along. So I place the sheets, as I said, back to front. So took that one off and then I would be this one and then this one and then this one and then this one and then this one. If, if the diamond painting was this size. So um, that's it basically. So now if you're looking at uh, whips in your favourite uh, group and you see all these pieces of paper now you know what they are and why people use them so that was uh, cover sheets or release paper whatever you want to call it um, the the reason you may be wondering like why uh, people go for paper that's only shiny on one side it's obviously a lot easier if it's shiny on both um, the, the answer to that is the, the double-sided shiny is more expensive. So it's really up to you. You can go for the, the single-sided stuff like I was using. Um, and as long as you come up with some sort of system where you're not going to make a mistake and stick it the wrong way, um, it's fine. But the reason that I went off this is the fact that... Uh, it's a, it actually happened twice that the shiny side um, didn't come off as easily as it should and I had to take my time and be very slow and careful to get it off um, didn't like that at all so that's why I decided to get the double sided I don't have to think about it and as I said it turned out that the, the new ones were smaller and it suits me better, I prefer them um, simple as that um, the other option though, um, talking about money, which is important to everybody, um, if you don't want to spend money on this sort of thing, um, when you do, uh, your, when you've finished your first diamond painting and you're going on to your second one, uh, which most people do, <laughs> um, if you keep the paper that you had from the first one, you can cut this into rectangles and you can build up a stack of uh, release paper made up of just the standard stuff which is made for that purpose so um, if you don't uh, don't ruin it too much uh, you can cut that up into rectangles and basically you've got some free stuff so that's always an option or you can just uh, use the the cover that comes with it and cut it up and bend it and use it throw it away you'll get a new one with the next one uh, you could do that as well it's, it's really up to you um so that that was it um as i said i'm actually going to be doing a thing um about what happens if you accidentally drop tissue paper um your your key um on the the glue and how do you get it off can you get it off and I'm also going to be testing some other things um, to see what happens if you use them. 
Um, I did read in one of the groups that someone had tried to cover uh, the diamond painting with cling film. Um, I'm interested to see what happens with that. So I'll be using uh, the cover sheets, I'll be putting them on the wrong way around, the ones that are only shining on one side, I'll be putting them the, the, um, the dull side down to see what happens. Um, as I showed you the one that I got from Mike um, at Smith Speeds, it actually has a warning on it saying that um, do not stick the matte side to the surface of the diamond painting, otherwise the diamond painting will be damaged. So I want to see what happens. And the canvas that I've been using is one that I did in my, uh, used in my previous video. It's actually a faulty canvas, so I'm going to use it to test all this stuff um, I might try th some other things just just for the sake of it really uh, like tin foil um, just just because um, and just see how they all compare and uh, try to get them off without damaging the glue and see how that works hopefully it's educational to somebody somebody might see the video and think ah I know how to fix that because the most common thing is paper and it's usually the key because people sit the key um, beside their diamond painting and they don't put any kind of weight on it or anything and a gusty wind or just somebody walks by and it's enough for the paper to move and it touches the glue and if it touches the glue it sticks when you try and peel it off it rips the paper and um, that's what happens but it leaves residue paper on the glue and the thing is, how do you get that off the glue without damaging the glue and keeping the canvas sticky? So that's what I'm going to be doing in the next video. So again, thanks to everybody. Um, thanks again to the people who dropped in on my very first YouTube Live. Uh, it was really nice to get um, people joining in and uh, asking questions and we had uh, a bit of fun doing that. Um, I'm actually going to be doing another YouTube live tonight. I don't have my watch on uh, in about four hours. So my wife will be joining me for that one. And uh, we're looking forward to people dropping in. Uh, you can maybe ask her how she's getting on with her diamond painting. Um, some people may have seen the video that I did where she tried diamond painting for the first time and told us uh, she wouldn't be taking it up. Um, as I've said before, that has changed, so you could maybe ask her what changed her mind. Um, so that's in about four hours, I think, roughly, uh, 8 p.m. Copenhagen time, 7 p.m. Uh, UK time, and I have no idea American time. Um, so uh, maybe I'll catch you there. If not, in the meantime, take care, be safe and wash your hands.